www.templeofmonology.com. Next question. I wanted to ask what determines, like, at the point of, of death, mm -hmm. what, you know, uh, how it's Whether you're a disembodied soul or not. Yeah. Um, two things can determine that, right? When you die and how you die. Mm -hmm. When you die, if the soul hasn't matured and grown enough to be independent of the physical body on this next journey. And that's why the saying was you cry when a young person dies or mourn when a young person and when an older person you rejoice. That's where that saying came from. How you die, and, and, and if that person died you know, before being a fully matured soul, then they will be trapped not able to ascend or to go further along on that journey so they will be stuck here because they think that they're still supposed to be here. And that's why you have disembodied souls that will hover around hospitals, graveyards, right, or the scene of an accident. People will say they saw a specter or a spirit or a ghost around a point where a person was killed, that person was still lingering because they're trapped there. And until they burn out the desire to be there, they can't move. Also, how you die, because certain traumatic experiences make it virtually impossible for you to make a smooth transition to the next realm. Accidents, murders, you know, things of that nature that allow certain chemicals to be secreted into the body that don't allow the soul to leave through the nervous system the way, because your soul exits through your nervous system when you die. So it's certain chemicals that are secreted into the body that stagnate that process. You follow? So when and how you die, and that's why we knew that there was a science to passing on the transition. So we would put ourselves in a certain environment where we were less prone or less apt to a premature or traumatic death. Right. These were safe zones that we would create for ourselves. And it will allow us to mature physically, spiritually, and mentally enough to when we transition, we just walked over. Okay? That old elderly person is back to becoming a child again to get to prepare. And that's why you want to reach old age. At old age, your body starts to slow you down so you will stop doing the things that trap the soul here. So you can do less of that. Some people, they listen, and other people don't. You see, <laughs> see a 80 year, 70 year old cat in a box, they were drinking and hanging out. But it's supposed to slow you down so you will start the transition. You know what I'm saying? So elderly people start speaking to entities that you can't see. And children still see them. And they speak to them. And we tell them they don't see what they know they see. And we start, to, we start them on a journey from being a vivid God into a vague demon. And start lying to everybody. We yeah. teach children to start and lying to right? Yeah. So that's what. So that's the whole process. We we knew. We had the knowledge, and the information, and the intelligence, and the link to nature to know to always put ourselves in an environment that allowed us to grow spiritually and mature spiritually. That way, when we left this realm or this experience called life, this school called life, to go to the next realm, we were prepared to cross over and enter that realm. So, um, if you're disembodied, um, how do you like elevate out of the, this realm of your stuff? That person, that, that being, or that entity, has to burn out the desire to be in this realm. You know, and they, uh, and they uh, their hell is to be around whatever event that kept them there, whether it's a relative they care a lot about, whether it's sex, whether it's drugs, whether it's you know, whatever, they are stuck to that incident until they burn out, right? And it's a hell because they can't interact. They can only hover around it. You follow what I'm saying? Exactly. That book goes goes into it in depth. But that you know, they're stuck here until they burn out their desire. But the key, right, is to prepare.